What's my time? What do you mean you didn't start? The news headline usually sounds something like police investigating after body found off shoreline or body found floating in river. It goes to demonstrate that crime scenes are not just terrestrial, they can be aquatic. And some bodies of water have more bodies than other bodies of water. For example, it's reported that the Hudson River sees an average of 59 corpses annually versus the Chattahoochee River, which may have 10 in 10 years. Considering that the vast majority of the earth is covered in water, it should be no surprise that for some, it's the final resting place. So grab your snorkel and strap on your flippers because today we're diving into the science of why dead bodies float. Welcome to the show. I'm Detective Zach Kowalski, a real life crime scene investigator. And today we're diving into the fascinating science of why bodies float and sink during decomposition. And it looks like Bonesworth is already in summer mode. What are you doing, bud? Well, don't get too comfortable because we've got a show to do. So to understand why bodies float during decomp, we got to understand a little bit about the decomposition process as well as some basic principles of buoyancy. So let me float an idea by you. It's called Archimedes' Principle. Archimedes' Principle explains why objects or bodies float. You see, imagine that you're in a swimming pool and you have a beach ball. Well, Archimedes' Principle is why when you push the beach ball down, there's a lot of force wanting it to pop right back up. That's Archimedes' Principle in action. That's buoyancy. This buoyant force is equal to the weight of water displaced. So to show this in action, we have an experiment. We have our body, we have our body of water, and we've got some different measuring devices. The first thing we need to know is we need to know how much our body weighs. So he weighs 200 grams. We need to mark our original water line. Now we're gonna submerge our body into the water. So with him submerged, now we're gonna drain the water back to the original water line. So now we weigh the water that was displaced. And with the bowl already zeroed out to account for the weight of the bowl, we end up with 200 grams. This explains why boats and ships can float. Even though they're made of really heavy metals, they are designed to push enough water out of the way to stay afloat. Fun fact, Archimedes discovered this more than 2,000 years ago. He noticed the water level rise when he got in his bath. Understanding what he just noticed, he jumped up with so much excitement, he went running out of the bathroom naked, running through the streets, shouting Eureka, which in Greek, means I found it. So next time you're in a pool with a beach ball, remember, it's all about Archimedes principle at work. So how does this relate to a dead body? Well, when a body is submerged in water, it initially sinks due to its density. Seawater typically has an average density of 1.02 kilograms per liter, whereas fresh water is about two to 3% lower. A human body has a density range of 1.03 to 1.1. While it's close, it's still denser than water, and therefore, it sinks. But as death occurs, your body's cells are starved of oxygen and start breaking down due to the enzymes within the cells. Byproducts of this make excellent nutrition for the natural bacteria within the body. This causes the bacteria to start breaking down the rest of the body from the inside out. This process is called decomposition, and a byproduct of the bacteria are gases, Gases like methane, hydrogen sulfide, and carbon dioxide. These gases accumulate and the body bloats. This increases buoyancy. Thus, a decomposing body will pop back up like a buoy until the gases can escape from orifices or tears in tissue, and then it will sink for the last and final time. Today, we have a much better understanding of this process than Archimedes did. But there are still challenges, like determining the exact time frame of when a body will float 
and that depends on a variety of different factors, such as the temperature of the water or the salinity, and these factors have a direct influence on the rate of decomposition. Temperature is a huge factor. The colder the water, the slower the bacteria work and the slower the decomposing rate is. Bacteria like myself prefer warm tropical waters. This entire process can take anywhere from a few days to a few weeks. So there you have it. The science behind why bodies float in water during decomposition is all about the gases produced and the principles of buoyancy. Understanding this process can help forensic scientists and investigators determine timelines and solve cases. Thanks for joining us on this aquatic crime scene adventure. Science can be found in some of the most unexpected places, even here at the pool. And if you enjoy these videos, then subscribe to the channel and be part of our mystery squad. Thank you so much for joining us today. I'm Detective Zach, that's Bonesworth, and until next time, stay curious.